What's up, Grinding It Up gang? Welcome to another video on my YouTube channel explaining you guys how to use, how to treat, how to set up Holder Manager. This is a brand new series that I'm starting because people have been requesting this on the stream, on my Grinding It Up series. It's actually been over two years now and I haven't done one of these videos. Shame on me, shame on my head. This is the start of a new series called Setting It Up and getting into the depth of all the strategic material that you can put to good use in order to improve your poker game. That I'm using on stream, that I'm using on Twitch, that I'm using on YouTube, that I'm using on my videos, that I'm using in my coachings and that I'm recommending recommending to my students. In the first episode, we're going to check up on Holder Manager 2, which has been a tool that I've been using for almost my entire career. I actually can't think of a time where I wasn't using it. Maybe in the first days I was using Poker Tracker 2. It was. I was using Holder Manager 1, which was a little bit brighter, and they had these white graphs. If you Google you find some of my old graphs which have been produced with Holder Manager 1. Then they brought up Holder Manager 2 and I switched to it. Without these tools, I wouldn't be the player that I am today. These tools have really helped me improve my game. Not because of the HUD, don't get me wrong. Over the years of playing poker online, I've been importing millions and millions of hands into all my tools. Holder Manager 1, it was Holder Manager 2, Poker Tracker 2, Poker Tracker 3, and now Poker Tracker 4. Even though they're split into very many parts, I can review them and check up on my game and see how I've been doing, what I've been doing wrong, what I've been doing right. I can go and set filters. I can do all sorts of different things and I want to show that to you, what you can actually do with these tools in order to analyze and review your game. This is the stuff that really helped me to become the player that I am. They have been helping me in finding my own leaks, plugging my own leaks, filtering for stuff that I even didn't know I was doing wrong, and helping my students to get better at the game too. And look at their hands, replay their hands in the replayer, go street by street, analyze, review, improve. That's basically what Holder Manager, Poker Tracker, all these tools are about. They're not about trying to take advantage in game by using hands on people that you have. Yes, a HUD is going to help you in game for sure, it's going to give you some pointers, your opponents. But you should not let a HUD use you. First of all, we're going to start this video with how to set your Holder Manager up so that it actually runs and that it imports your hands. I think a lot of people also had trouble with this, and I want to start the video explaining this to you. It's fairly easy. First of all, you got to go on your PokerStars client. You open the client, and you go down to Playing History under Overview and Settings. So first of all, you have to open your PokerStars client. You go to Settings. And then you click on Overview and you check your hand histories here. And you have to define a folder where PokerStars saves your hand histories. I like to have them saved for about 30 days because it could be that sometimes I don't import a session directly. I'm not using the HUD in game. I might be playing somewhere else. I still want the computer to store the hands for me for a couple of days so that next time I fire up Holder Manager, it still imports those hands. Also make sure that the language is set to English. If it's set to another language, it might not import. A lot of people have trouble with having the language set to German and then not having Holder Manager import the hands. All right, so we got the GIU 2015 folder set up here. Right, then you go to database. I highly recommend that you split your databases into different years or even months because databases can get quite large. As you can see here, my Holder Manager database actually is 6,000 megabytes. And that can happen quite quickly if you play a lot of volume, if you play a lot of hands. So it really makes sense to split them up by years or by even months. So let's set up one just as a sample for 2016. So we got one already. I've got one for 2014, 2015. We're setting that up for 2016. And if we want Holder Manager to, to import into this, we have to set this as a default database. So we just click this icon. Are you sure you want to change the active database? And you change in the active database to grinding it up 2016. I actually want to find the folder that you set up in PokerStars. So you're going to go plus and find the GIU 2015 folder on the poker, GIU 2015. And what you could also do is, in case you have any other subfolders, any other folders where hands are being stored, or when you request hands and they're sent to a different folder, you can do the auto detect, and then it'll automatically find all other folders that are also so associated with this. Right, so now we should be all set, and we can try this out at the tables and see if that's actually worked. So we're gonna open a table here, a regular one and a Zoom poker one and see if that has worked. That's the one sent to send zoom pool, so we're going to join that. And as you can see, the Holder Manager HUD already pops up here. This player, Jabuha, he's already been recognized for four hands. We have a couple of stats on him. All looking good. Let's see that here. All right, let's check for the zoom HUD if that's going to work. 
So, as you can see, once we join the zoom table, we already see that this has been recognized and the player is in the right position, the right seat. If it isn't the case, you can always readjust the settings through preferred seating mode here if you click on this icon up here. Let's re-raise this 10-9 suited because it's such a pretty hand. And when we now check back with Holder Manager, we can see that our session, our game, and our hands have been imported. In the graph tab here, or if we clear the filters on this one, we see that we've played 22 hands, and we'll find this 10-9 suited hand that we just 3-bet. Look at this. Here we go. And he just folded. Let's move on to my HUD. I'm using the Grinding It Up HUD, as you already saw. If we open the zoom table again, you will see that if I join this pool, it'll automatically be this hut that I have here and it'll say grinding it up. This is my hut that I've specifically designed and adjusted over the years and I've been using this for ages basically since I've actually started and I've improved it and improved it and added some pop-ups. First line is all about the VPIP and the prefab race. Next line, uh, next stat is going to be the three bet percentage and the full to three bet percentages. Next line is going to be the small blind full to steal and the big blind full to steal. You've got the total four bet number, how often somebody re-raises back at a three bet and also how often somebody folds to another re-raise once they have three bet. And then this little panel here, the second panel, this tells you how often somebody opens from under the gun, middle position, cutoff, button, and small blind. So it's all separated by positions. That helps a great deal. And we have the pop-ups. Uh, it's a little bit more detailed so you can basically see all the different numbers by position, how aggressive somebody is on each street, how often somebody three bets in different positions, under the gun, middle position, cutoff button, small blind, and so forth. Let's move on. We've basically set up Holder Manager. We've checked out how to import and set up the HUD. Now let's get into reviewing our game, analyzing our game, and hopefully improving our game. What I do is I go to reports and I check out different stats sorted by different levels. You have different tabs up here which you can change. You can basically add more reports as you like, graph your progress as you've played. So for instance last month at 50 no limit if I want to filter, but I can also do different filters and just set this for my 2NL graph for instance and take all dates, take all my 2NL hands graphed into one big graph. Let's check this one out. That's not it. There we go. Looks neat, but pretty big break, even and downswing stretches. You also have options down here. You can also display your showdown and non-showdown winnings. Some people are really fond of this and want to analyze this. I don't really think it's a good idea. I've talked about this and grinding it up very, very many times. I think it's something you should not concern yourself with. What's really important is the green line. As long as you're turning a profit, this should be nothing to worry about. The red line is going to go down because we are basically playing a showdown oriented style at these micro stakes levels. Also check your all in EV which tells you how good or bad you've run but that doesn't matter. In the long run this will all even out. You will see these curves basically approaching each other over time. So for instance in this C bet success tab it's quite interesting to see how often you've actually fired C bets on different board textures. You can see that for instance on nine high less rainbow boards I've actually fired quite a lot. As you can see here the su most successful C bet rate I produced on queen high boards and um, on king high boards. It's quite interesting that on ace high boards my C bet success rate isn't all that great. And the same applies to especially the low card boards and the A-side two-tone boards with a flush draw on board. So it's probably very likely that I'm C-betting too much in these and I should slow down with most of my bluffs because people seem to be calling a lot. My success rate is not very high. So then the overall one can be filled with different stats. You can see your own VPIP. I'm actually quite loose, 30%. Preflop rate is 24. That's quite a bit. High 3-bet percentage. High aggression, but it's nothing that I wouldn't have expected. If you want to check out specific stats, you can add them here and they're all in the list. What's really important is the positional tab, and I really like this. I'm always doing this as a review session with my students when I first check their databases or when we review them together, because I think it's very important to check your performances in different positions. You should be winning the most amount of money in the button, then you should be winning the next highest amount on the cutoff, middle position, early position. So that's all good here. And you should be losing in the big blind by no more than 50 BB per 100. That's kind of like a good guideline. And you should not be losing less than half of that in the small blind. So here my stats kind of check out and it looks like 10 and L has been going quite well for me. I have a high VPIP on the button, which is quite normal, actually 15% more than on the 
And what you can then do if you spot something that you find interesting and that you think might be a leak, you can check your different hands here. You can go down into the hand section and you can just click on a certain hand. So for instance, I could check my King-5 suited here, open it in a replayer, and just basically check out if that hand has been played well or misplayed or if something could be improved. Let's check this pocket kings here. So I see a 4-bet, then I decided to flat call and it went in, so all the money went in and it was against aces, so nothing to be done here. It's also interesting to see the all-in equity numbers here on the right-hand side. I don't really need to review these hands when my all-in equity was actually at 88% or 66%. I saw 8.4. We checked the 8.4 here and my money went in with kings against aces. That's nothing to be concerned with. Check my big blind play, for instance, with that king-10 hand. That looks quite interesting. So I see a raise and I defend it pretty deep. I flop top pair. I check raise the flop, which is already an overplay of the hand, I think. So this is definitely a mistake because we're so deep, I don't want to bloat the pot too much. Um, and he goes over the top, I call. And this is where action goes wrong. So this is really not a great play by me. I do turn to pair, now I don't get away from the hand, but I brought this upon myself and I shouldn't have check raised. I should have controlled the pot, especially given we're deep. So this is a massive leak, actually. This is a big leak and I should definitely fix this. So bad play by me. Definitely something to analyze. It's interesting to check the equities here. Like, I don't want to check on the kings because that went in on the flop and I was ahead, jack 5 6. All good. If I check this hand here, 9.1, I got it in bad and very deep. So, a lot of money goes in with 9% equity. You have to check that, guys. That's something that might be leaking you money. There's a whole lot more to do and we can run a whole lot of filters. It's not always about the big pots. That's something I need to point you to because that's also something that I tell my students in private sessions when we filter where you lose a lot of money. is not the big pots that you lose. You also need to check up on those and you can do that by checking the equity. But what's more important is the medium-sized pots most of the time. And these are really tough to filter for, but you can do that if you just go to overall basically. Say we go back to 2NL and we want to see, okay, flicks. How have you performed in a situation where you called versus a 3-bet? I called a 3-bet, maybe out of position, maybe in position. I want to filter that. So I go here, call versus 3-bet. I can also go for advanced filters, and I can also find more specific filters here. But I can add that called preflop 3-bet is true filter. I can also set it to false here if I need to set some specific filters. And then I go back to basic filters and check for my position. So for instance, I want to check when I was 3-bet and I didn't have position. The 3-better's position, you can check it out here, was on the button or on the cutoff or in middle position. So we were actually out of position in the first three positions against a 3-better. So we want to check how we've performed. We can do that. And what I do now is I basically check my heat map down here. This is a whole card grid or a heat map. And you can check out what kind of hands you've had trouble with. So for instance, the heat map tells me that I've had trouble with ace-jack suited. It's a hand that I frequently flatted out of position against the 3-bet, it seems. The same applies to king-queen suited, king-queen offsuit, and ace-queen offsuit, and even ace-king offsuit. So even those marginal hands and even the suited connectors here, they cause some trouble. So I have to check. So let's see here. I opened with ace-jack suited. I got a big 3-bet here and I decided to flat call. Flop came ace-i. I decided to check call the flop. And then I decided to check jam the turn and I wasn't good against ace-king. So if that frequently happens, I need to check my stats, how I perform with medium strength aces in 3-bet pots. I should probably be able to get away from these hands more often against high aggression from tighter 3-betters. That definitely gives me a pointer to where my potential leaks might be. Another interesting tab is the session tab. The session tab lists all your different sessions by the time that you played, by the profit that you made, by the stats that you've played in that session, and the result, of course. It definitely helps me seeing that my long sessions were more successful and my short sessions I should usually quit when I'm down a little bit and just play the longest when I'm actually playing my best poker. So as we can see, if we filter that, we see that my optimal session length is probably somewhere between three, two, three, and four hours. Like all the winning sessions are two, three, or four hours. If I've played any longer than that, I've actually not turned a profit. And we probably check the shorter sessions, and we will find out that like the sessions that have been very short have been very successful too. Like 45 minutes to an hour have also been very successful. And 
most of the negative sessions are in the medium range between one hour and two hours because that's when I usually find out that I'm not playing all too well. There are tons and tons more filters and more specifics. You gotta really get a grip on Holder Manager yourself. Just explore it. There's so much to see and do with Holder Manager. This tool is really invaluable. I could basically give you some homework. I could I'm, al I'm always giving my students homework. I'm telling them filter specifically for these situations where you have trouble. Like when you face a three bet with ace king, you can go ahead and set a filter. You can do whole card filters. You can select none. You can say I have ace king preflop three bet. So some of my students ask me, what should I do with ace king flicks? I'm not sure. Every time I get it in, people show me better hands. I'm not sure if I'm running profitable with it if I get it in preflop. What I tell them is if you have enough hands, you can just filter and if you can just make yourself aware if that's a profitable player or not and if it is then you know the baseline is profitable and you can deviate from it if you need to I really hope you enjoyed this little video it's only starting to give you some pointers and you gotta explore it yourself I hope you're very successful with this if you want to get holder manager on my site don't forget you get the yellow guide for free just send me an email and the receipt of your purchase with the link with the affiliate link and I'm sending out the yellow guide which gives you some more insight into a lot of these topics as well especially regarding the HUD and the explanation of the stats and the mathematical thresholds of each stat where it starts to get profitable to re-raise somebody or to fold or to exploit them by stealing their blinds more often and so forth if you like the video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button as always with my videos. And I'm going to continue on this setting it up series with Poker Tracker and then with other softwares that I'm using in order to improve my game, review my game, and get better at this. In the meantime, all you got to do is keep filtering and keep grinding it up, everybody.